Hi, this is Dr. Bernstein again with session 13 of our Diabetes University. And the subject of this uh, session is going to be CVID, which stands for Common Variable Immune Deficiency. This is a serious disease that happens to afflict about 25% of diabetics. They inherit it. They uh, do not acquire it. It is not a complication of diabetes. It's in their genetics. Uh, I'm one of the victims, and I discovered this a long time ago in myself, and uh, once I found it, I started testing my own patients and uh, discovered that about 25% of my own patients have this problem. Initially, I only tested those who in their written history complained of chronic sinusitis. And uh, I found, uh, I actually called in the immunology department of my medical school. They came and looked through my records and found that 19% of my patients, that of those whom I had tested, had CVID. So I started immediately testing every one of my patients, every new patient. And amongst the new patients uh, who, whether they did or did not have sinusitis, I found that 25% had CVID. Now, what is CVID? It's an immune deficiency disorder that's uh, where not enough antibodies are made. Antibodies are normally made by white cells in the, in the bloodstream called B cells or B lymphocytes. And B lymphocytes make a number of principal antibodies called immunoglobulins. To test for this condition, we usually test for uh, the following immunoglobulins, IgA, which is immunoglobulin A, IgG, IgM, and these are the principal three immunoglobulins that we usually test for, and major deficiencies in any one or combination of these can lead to frequent illness. Uh, def deficiencies in these immunoglobulins can also lead to uh, malignancies because it is the immune system that uh, destroys cancer cells while there's still only a few of them around before you really get a metastatic malignancy. So I discovered by accident that 25% of my new patients had CVID. Now, uh, if this condition is severe enough to cause symptoms and to justify the insurance system for paying uh, the cost of treatment, the treatment is pretty straightforward, and that's intravenous gamma globulin, where the globulins that you're not making you're getting by intravenous infusion. This typically, typically takes about three hours, and uh, it's usually performed once a month, but in some individuals it's necessary to give it every three weeks, in extreme cases perhaps every two weeks. Now, to give you an example of what can happen when you have this condition. Uh, I'll cite one interesting case. Uh, I discovered in a new patient, a lady, that she had CVID, but she had no symptoms. So, uh, I, uh, I'm sorry, I think she had 
uh, sinusitis several times a year. But that was it. Uh, certainly not necessary to give her frequent intravenous treatments at a cost of several thousand dollars each treatment uh, for occasional sinusitis. But I told her, if you ever get a severe infection, give me a call, let me know right away. A few years later, I get a call out of the blue from this lady. She says, my blood sugars are very high. I can't understand it. I need your help. I said, okay, tell me what's going on. And she says, oh, and by the way, I have MRSA. That's methicillin resistant staph aureus. Uh, a very serious, in her case, it was a, started off as a skin infection. She had had minor surgery for a growth on her back. Uh, it was done in a surgeon's office in a hospital, because MRSA is much more common in hospitals than out in the general population. Uh, this thing got infected, and it spread to sores all over her body and even had sores in her mouth. And I said, I've got to speak to your... I said, do you remember I told you you had immune deficiency? She said, yeah, I, I, now that you mention it, I recall that, yeah. I said, well, I've got to talk to your doctor. So I spoke to the doctor, and he or she was worried about her blood sugars, and he said, she's not responding to any medications. She's getting intravenous uh, vancomycin several times a day, and we don't expect her to survive. She's got, maybe she'll live a month. <laughs> so... I told them that she had an immune deficiency and that she should immediately get intravenous gamma globulin. They did that, and within three days she was cured. So this sort of gives you a rough idea of the severity of this condition. In addition to people getting frequent infections, we've had a number of people with malignancies. Um, I had one patient who had a low IgM and cancer of the tongue. He was a non-smoker. He was about age 50 when he developed this. In fact, I think he got it when he was in his 40s. Um, we had several people with breast cancer and so on and so forth. So this is a, severe, a, a serious condition it does not always have to be treated. It has to be severe enough to cause infections or other problems. One test that's usually done to gauge the severity is to measure uh, antibodies to pneumonia, pneumococcal antibodies. Initially, we test pneumococcal antibodies to, say, to see whether the patient has any immunity to pneumonia. We give them a pneumonia vaccine, wait one or two months, and look again at the antibodies to see if they've increased substantially. And if there's hardly cha any change, we know that this person is not responding to the vaccine, and that's the kind of evidence that the insurers want before they will pay for uh, intravenous gamma globulin. So this is a serious condition. The patients have to be frequently reminded that uh, they should contact the doctor if they get any infection because that may be an indication of a need for uh, intravenous gamma globulin. Uh, we published one article on this subject in the journal Allergy and Immunology, and at the end of this uh, session, if you look at the footnotes, you'll see a reference to this article. It, it doesn't tell you very much because it was published in the annual uh, review uh, of this journal where they uh, had f 1,500 abstracts or more and it's buried in there, so in effect, no one knows about 
the fact that this is so common amongst diabetics. As you know, many of the uh, people with CVID have it severely enough that they must get routine gamma globulin infusions. Uh, these prevent uh, infections and uh, that's the main reason for them. But as an aside, they, may, they probably also prevent malignancies. Now there are, there are complications to these infusions, or I should say potential complications. Not everyone gets complications from them. So uh, the doctors in charge of these infusions have to be very careful. The one major problem for diabetics who take insulin is hypoglycemia. And I'll just give you my brief experience. I was getting an infusion many years ago, walked out of the infusion center, walked into a glass door, passed out, and woke up in an emergency vehicle parked out front of the infusion center and standing there in his white coat with a, a big smile on his face was my immunologist uh, who when I came to said to me this happens to all my type 1 patients I said so what do you do about it he said well you're the expert you tell me <laughs> well what I have to do about it is take frequent blood sugars he said there's he thinks there's a beta cell recovery for type 1 diabetics and I did not challenge this because many studies of cadavers of older patients uh, people who died uh, type 1's and type 2's find that there are still remaining beta cells even after many years of diabetes. Not enough to really help you with blood sugars, but enough to recover if you do something to help them reverse their state. So apparently I was experiencing beta cell recovery and this can occur not only just after an infusion, but even days later or weeks later so I have to be checking blood sugars every hour. I have uh, during the day, and I do it every three hours at night, I have a uh, timer somewhere around here uh, with little levers that you can th uh, throw to ring you every half hour or every hour, and I check my blood sugar every hour during the day. Uh, and you never know when I'll drop. I might, out of the blue, drop by 50 or 100 without taking any extra insulin. Uh, the other problem uh, that is quite significant has to do with serum viscosity. An infusion of gamma globulin can raise your serum viscosity. And in my case, it was tragic because we weren't checking serum viscosity. I did not know about this. And over a period of years, I gradually, rapidly, I should say, developed glaucoma. And had a feeling that maybe serum viscosity had something to do with glaucoma. Did a search on the internet. Sure enough, they were related. And I, uh, got lab tests of my own serum viscosity and sure enough it was double normal. So uh, this rapidly deteriorating glaucoma we put to a stop by uh, lowering my dose of gamma globulin. However it was too late. Uh, a quarter of my visual field was already gone uh, and uh, my overall vision uh, is quite poor as a result. Uh, I might say that uh, I'm pr I've lost a lot of important vision uh, thanks to the glaucoma. And it won't get any worse now that we've corrected the 
uh, serum viscosity, but it's not going to get any better. Uh, other people can uh, develop allergies. Uh, my sister, who also gets gamma globulin, uh, develops itching after her infusions. So there are potential problems. You have to be on top of the dosing that it doesn't get too great. And uh, that's about all I can tell you for, for now as far as uh, CVID is concerned. The bulk of what you've heard on this video uh, appears in my book, Dr. Bernstein's Diabetes Solution, which is available at uh, most internet and local bookstores. It is published by the Hachette Book Group. I'd like to remind you that we have monthly free teleseminars every month at the site askdrbernstein.net. Doctor is spelt D-R, so askdrbernstein.net for a free monthly teleseminar. Uh, sign up a day or two in advance so that you get a reserved seat. Good luck and thanks for listening.